My name's Nicole. I'm uh, working for CQU CMAC, the Coastal Marine Ecosystem Research Centre, and I am taking care of the seagrass nursery at Coral Sea Marina. Seagrass is actually the only 0.2% of the seabed worldwide, but they store 10% of the carbon in the oceans. They're such a vital part of the ecosystem. Not only are they habitat for turtles, dugongs, they also serve as nurseries for fish that end up out on the reef. They do sediment trapping, they'll take impurities out of the water so that we have better quality water going out onto our reefs. My name is Professor Emma Jackson. I'm the director of the Coastal Marine Ecosystems Research Centre at Central Queensland University. Now, I've been studying seagrasses for probably over 20 years. I like the fact that seagrasses are, are just such an incredible habitat and provide so many different what we call ecosystem services, right from the sort of fish habitat through to blue carbon capture. They do all these amazing things and are sometimes overlooked. I'm always one for sort of looking at the underdog. My name is Cass Hayward. I work for Reef Catchments and I'm the coordinator of the Whitsunday Reef Islands Initiative. The nursery was built and installed here at Coral Sea Marina early in 2022. The first thing that the CQU project leads did was go out and collect seagrass from Pioneer Bay Meadow so that we're using material that has come from the same meadow that we want to restore. And they collected pots of seagrass with all of the rhizomes in and then brought it back to the nurseries. The idea behind the seagrass in these tanks is that we can collect the seeds from them, we can store the seeds, when there is an, an event like a cyclone that damages some of the seagrass meadows, we can take those seeds and we can replant the meadows. The purpose of the work is to develop better methods for seagrass meadow rehabilitation. This nursery, we're going to be expanding it. We've been looking at what works and what doesn't work. This design here has been really effective at growing seagrass, the seagrass growth has been exceptional. The new tank that we got on the, on the pilot system is a flow through system where we've actually got the water circulating around in the tank. We find that if you've got a lot of flow in the tanks then the seagrasses don't build as much algae up and they just tend to be healthier. That setup has been one of our most successful like designs of seagrass nurseries so far in the GBR out of the four that we've got. So that's the system that we're going to be replicating for a scale up of that system in Airlie Beach. The other exciting thing with that scale up is that we're going to be obviously increasing the number of plants but also having it in a part of the marina where people can actually access it and come and learn about seagrasses a little bit more easily than where it is at the moment. It'll be great for actually showing people what difference they're making and just interacting with all of the people that use the marina and to see you know, how they can help seagrasses. The Whitsundays is a very small percentage of the overall Great Barrier Reef area, but it sees about 50% of the tourism for the whole GBR. It is a really a hub for people to come and learn about the reef and experience the reef. And there's a lot of stewardship in the Whitsundays, people wanting to do the right thing and you know wanting to be involved in these types of projects. There is such a huge community of people that are involved in improving our natural environment and it's across many different industries as well so everybody's banded together, they work together to help the natural environment. 